Hey y'all, how are you guys doing? I decided to record this video while I am on pause. I've actually decided to go a little bit more. At first I was only gonna be out for one month. I'm gonna have to go ahead and do two months, you guys. Um, we're gonna get to this hair in a minute. Yes, you guys, this is cute, huh? I may try to recreate this in the summertime. Anyway, y'all, we are, excuse my accent, honey. My voice is, my accent gets very, very heavy when I'm tired or drunk and right now I'm tired I'm not drunk I'm very tired I haven't been sleeping well y'all um I've always had insomnia but it's been a little a little rough insomnia insomnia lately I'm okay nothing's major going on Grace is dang on pandemic hey I'm so sick of this shit so anyway y'all so let's get into this hair yes so I blew out my hair when was it last week I blew up my hair and then I saw, who did I see? I saw Jeanette Beauty. Um, she had taken down her protective styles and I saw she had beads in. I'm like, that's really cute. I've always wanted to do beads, but I don't want them all over my hair. So I just did the front and I added a little jewel. So yes, I started this yesterday and finished today. I could have finished it yesterday, but I'm lazy and I don't care. Um, so this is a close up of what it looks like. This will last me for three weeks. Yeah, it's very, very pretty. Um, honey, people will look at this and probably think I have extensions and stuff. This is all of my hair. Y'all know. This is all of my. But y'all know how we do this. I talk about what's going on in my personal life when I'm watching on YouTube and then when I'm watching on TV. All right, y'all. So personal life is going well. We just came back from vacation. We just came back from Vegas. Girl, there was nobody in Vegas, which is good. We stayed at the, the, at the Palazzo. Excuse me. I will be uploading that vlog hopefully within, within this week of when I'm filming this chit chat. Okay. It was really nice. Although... Miss Jackson, that's my maiden name, Miss Mrs. Denza and Mr. Denza got a little too lit the first night. Y'all, we are not young anymore. We're not. And so we thought that we could handle eating heavy, fattening food and drinking. Y'all, we were so sick. He was sick more so than I was because he had stomach bubble guts and issues. Child, even JB was like, the second day, JB was like, did y'all learn y'all lesson? <laughs> <laughs> I said, we were laughing, we were like, yeah, baby, we learned our lesson, not to, <laughs> and all we had were three or four drinks of cocktails, but mixed with the, um, greasy, nasty food, that was it, so, anyway, yeah, it was good, that was good to get away, and for me, that felt like, even though, you know, things were still kind of shut down, that felt like the realest vacation we've had since the pandemic, um, so yeah, that's, that's good. So homeschooling's going good. We had a week break there. We're still on break. This is our spring break. I do like to schedule in breaks for JB, you guys. Um, I had to reevaluate some things. And so, um, we pulled back on several, uh, subjects and we were mostly focusing on reading and math. And some writing. So what I was doing, you guys, I'm like, okay, Vivian, you're a writer. It, write a little short story for him and see how he can handle it. So I wrote a little two-page short story with Jay for JB. And he read it and he liked it. But that got him interested in other stories. So what I, it was so cute. What I did is I wrote little mini stories for him to read. Excuse me, I'm spitting. I wrote little mini stories for him to read with him as the main character. And then I'm trying to figure out, okay, what is he interested in right now? Cause y'all know kids, they change like that, what they're interested in. So right now it's Mario. So I've been writing these little mini adventures that he reads out loud um, about him, Mar Mario and Lu Luigi. And sometimes I put in his little friends around the neighborhood. Um, that's another thing you t to you guys. Every, I thought I heard him. He may interrupt me. Everybody has gone back to school. He only has one friend now that is homeschooled. Everybody has returned to school because some of the parents went ahead and got vaccinated and they feel like since they've gotten vaccinated that they should go back. And my husband keeps telling me and keeps reiterating to these folks. He's like, just because you got vaccinated doesn't mean you can't catch COVID. It just means that you have a, a better chance of recovering from it. And even that's not 100%. We're, we, there's still, in my opinion, there's too many question marks still. So anyway, 
Um, what am I saying? So any, yeah, he he liked that, and so I'm continuing that. But definitely discovered that JB is dyslexic, and he has an issue with transposing numbers with math. So for math, we are doing um Christian line education for math. We had to go back to first grade, which I'm perfectly fine with. Um, and he did his first quiz two weeks ago, and he scored a 90. So I think I I was. At first I was a little bummed out by that, but I think this is a best step is to draw back and like I said, focus on math and English. For reading, we switched up and I ordered all about reading. Y'all, these school supplies, homeschooling supplies, supplies, excuse me, are expensive. They're no joke. Um, his all about reading cost me 200. But that is specifically for kids that have um, dyslex or who are dyslexic. So I also got him a little reading guide. So he uses that to read. And so he's definitely improving with his reading. Definitely getting better with his math. So that's what we're focusing on. And I'm looking at his curriculum for second slash third grade. And then we'll start once he gets his reading and math a little bit stronger. Then we'll start incorporating science. Um, actually, we'll start doing science now, but in history. Anyway, um, what else is going on? There was a little bit of some neighborhood drama, which is going to tie me in to talk a little bit about the video with Kirk Franklin cursing the heck out of his son. Grown son, by the way. I discussed this in my vlog, too. I mean, yeah, I'm going to discuss this. So, this may be repetitive. So... A couple of weeks ago, I was over at my friend's house over here in the neighborhood. She's also a neighbor. And I guess JB and her granddaughter had been jumping on her trampoline. And a part of the netting came off. The father, the little girl's father, came down and straight cursed her out. The child. She's only nine years old. Mind you... I had had two or three drinks by then because JB and I had just came back from Papa Do's. And I must say what he said. I may bleep it out. But he came down the stairs and was like, what the f*** y'all do? Didn't I tell you not to f do that? Yeah, I'm going to bleep it out because I don't like that. Baby, when I tell you, I looked around. I looked at my friend and I looked at his wife. Because I, I, look. I didn't grow up in a household like that. My parents, bear, my mom never, never cursed. She doesn't curse. My dad maybe said, hell, that's it. My parents didn't curse us out and they didn't curse at us. No one in my family does that. So when I heard this, I was looking at my friend, because this is her, her grandbaby, right? This is the little girl that comes over here a lot, you guys, and she has a, a little accent. You know, she's starting to get a little accent, but now she's in school. So, uh-uh. No way. I went out there. I said, oh, we got to go. I told JB, I said, we got to go. And he's looking concerned because JB looked a little scared. And I knew that he knew the guy wasn't directly talking to him, but it was still very awkward because he did this in front of a bunch of people. And no one, no one said anything because I guess they're used to it dysfunctional ass so I said we gotta go and so I came back and followed him because he was ticked off the father he had went outside to see what they had done the babies had been jumping on the trampoline like I said and the net had came down because they were jumping on the net and then back off right he came back inside I followed his ass back inside I said um we don't do that he turned around he said huh looking at me like, huh I said yeah we don't do that in my house we do not curse out kids you may do that here in your household. That may be okay. But we don't do that. So on that note, we got to go. Give me my damn pot. <laughs> I, had, I had made them something, you know, a couple of nights before. And so the husband was, her husband was, um, the grandfather was cleaning the pot. Like, okay. I said, yeah, we don't do that. So you need to give me my stuff and we need to go. You don't do that to babies. I was so pissed. Girl, I took my stuff and went home. Miss Lori... My friend texts me, I hope you know that um, he wasn't talking to your child. I don't give a, you don't talk to your, is that normal? Even the wife, she she sent me a text message. She's like, I'm so, I'm so sorry for my husband's behavior. I told him to stop using that type of language. Well, clearly you're not telling him enough because his daughter wasn't even phased about that. And I'm going to get to the Kirk Franklin thing in a minute because I think that's disturbing too. I don't care if, if he is 33. There's something wrong with that. We'll get to that in a minute. But I was livid, y'all. When my husband found out, he stared at me like, 
my husband was very upset. He actually asked, he said, I don't think you should be going over there at all anymore. So unfortunately, uh, JB would not be allowed to stay over there unless I'm there. And I told her that. I told my friend, I said, he's not coming over here unless, because I had left him over there and I came back home. I was called, I said, that was the thing. And so I told her, I said, he can never stay over here by himself because the father went from zero to 100 like that. And so she started, she's like, I know, I know. Um, but he did ask them to stop jumping. I said, but that don't mean you got to curse out some babies like that. You don't talk to kids like, I said, let me ask you something. Did your parents talk to you like that? She's like, no, they didn't. I said, that's what I thought. So why would that be okay for your grandchild? You have to do Y'all, I was livid. So my husband was done too, and we ended up buying JB his own trampoline after that. That's why he has his own big trampoline. I'm like, look, you don't have to go over there. Come over here. And I feel kind of bad. And so, you know, with that, but there's something about that situation that they felt it was okay. It's something my spirit telling me don't do that. You know, there's something about him. And they're all stuck over there in the house. You know, quarantine got people acting crazy. So I'm like, no, my baby can't stay over here. Not without me. Uh-uh. No. So speaking on the Kirk Franklin thing, y'all, I did hear about the Kirk Franklin incident. And I did listen to some of the tape. Let me say this before I get started. There's something about something about Kirk Franklin that always made me feel uneasy. So when the allegations that came out, well, when he came out and said that he had an addiction to porn, I was like, okay, that's part of it. But there's something else about him. First of all, I really don't even listen to modern gospel because it's changed so much. And a lot of them love working with secular artists, which... Again, if that's what you want to do, that's your business. But I don't listen to Kirk Franklin, but I'm also not the type that's like, oh, is that Kirk Franklin? I don't want to listen. You know what I mean? It's not It's not like I go out of my way to not listen to him, but I couldn't name a song, a recent song. All I know is Silver and Gold, and that's from like 20 <laughs> song. So anyway, there's just something about him that makes me, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, y'all? Mm -hmm. So anyway... I listened to the tape, the audio tape, and he straight cursed his son out. And I know he has since came out with an apology. Let me tell you something. There is something, this is the reason why I couldn't even listen. And I understand that the, the his son is 33 years old. He's an adult. But we tend, we tend to oh say things like, oh, he's just human. Oh, you know, God may be working on him. We, I don't, I don't want to say that we pacify this, but, or, or I saw some comments like, oh, my parents said that to me, or let me tell you something. If you grew up in a household where that type of language was used towards you, or you heard that, please know that that is, a, is abuse. That is not okay. We have got to stop this, y'all. Um... There's certain something very wrong with a parent flat out cursing out their child. You may not agree with this. And yes, I do believe the son was wrong on his he's not he's not innocent. I'm not saying that. It was the anger behind it. I think he even said like he was gonna choke him out or step on his neck or what did he say, put his foot up his butt or it was just I was like, ooh. It was it was a bit much, and like I said, maybe it's, maybe it's because I wasn't I didn't grow up in a household like that. But that's not normal. Um, we have got we have got to stop this. We have got to stop the cycle of this abusive behavior. Um, we wonder why we continue to have generational curses in our family. That's and yes, I get it. He is a man. And yes, we all fall short. Um, but mm -mm, that's not that's not right, in my opinion. I do think it, it was very wrong for him to curse his son out like that. Um, just like it was wrong for this man to curse, you know, his daughter out. You see what I'm saying? So it's just something about us. I'm talking about all my people that we, oh, he didn't do anything wrong. Or even when it comes to strong discipline. Like I seen videos of family members completely. Like what is that one video of the father? The little girl had snuck out and he was literally beating the crap out of that child. And people were like, oh, my parents gave me worse beatings. That's not something to be happy about. 
you, you, that's abuse. You do know that. And especially if they come after you in anger. Oh my God, y'all. We got to do better. We we are hurting as a people. It really saddens me. And I can't, and I will say this too. I'm not going to say I would never ever do that. I don't know what I would do if, if I'm pushed to a limit, limit. But I am hoping by the grace of God that he would give me the strength. Okay, we got to really start praying over these type of situations. If I put it like this, I don't want my child to pick up any type of behavior like that from me. And I'm so glad my parents never talked down on us like that. Because you be, you basically are speaking death over your child. Think about the words that you, think about the curse words. I know we're going to go, we getting a little deep there. But think about the curse words themselves. You are cursing, you're speaking death over your child. You got to be careful. You really do. I don't know. It's called a curse for a reason. You're speaking negativity and death. And you're, you know, perpetuating that and continuing that cycle of hurt. The, it's not the first time his, his father had cursed him out. On top of that... I heard a snippet of a audio um, in that same breath and I really don't want to spend a lot of time on this because I haven't heard any of the sources on this but I heard a snippet of another audio apparently it's an audio of allegedly his son calling Kirk a molester so the 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 music Kirk Franklin's music is playing in the background and you can hear a young man's voice on the audio saying oh you're playing my molesters uh that's my molesters music and so I don't know for sure if that's the son or another young man saying that but in this particular YouTube video the person who made the video is saying that they think it's the son calling Kirk a molester so y'all the music industry whether or not it's gospel or secular is very very evil and wicked yeah, it's it's her song um uh, what, what did you make baby? are you able to draw this what in the sound Joe? what is this that is, baby this is me walking with the um danger sign right there and you got child you are paying attention to detail that's what i'm talking about and then and then look mm. Now he's going to bring his raggedy whip back. <laughs> Look, I just talked about that. No, my baby can't come in here. So, yeah, you guys, that's what's going on. You know, now I'm in, I'm in a better place with my neighbors. But for a while, I gave it a break. Like, I took a week-long break from over there. Um, but she has asked that I help keep one of the... Um, I'm going to be keeping one of the babies. Hoover. He's so cute. He's a baby I used to help watch. Um, now he's a toddler. But um, I used to watch him when he was a baby. He's so cute oh y'all love me some babies if i was younger i would probably have some more babies girl speaking of babies so many people are pregnant look linda linda's pregnant linda's having a girl um uh what is her name morgan is pregnant butter ripple she's on youtube as butter ripple i don't think she's posting in, in a while morgan is pregnant my star my starbucks girl is pregnant <laughs> Um, so y'all what I'm watching on YouTube really not much of anything. I'm, I'm really not watching a lot of YouTube honestly um, Started to watch a thousand pound sisters on YouTube. One of the sisters actually had COVID y'all the bigger one had COVID um, And then the other one just recently had a baby look I saw them I guess it was the grandmother feeding the baby food that baby's like four months. Oh, why are you spoon feeding, spoon feeding the baby at four months old? Anyway, y'all country people. So, what is that? I'm drawing. Also, look. Isn't it good? Drawing. That that looks fabulous, baby. You did really good. I'm on a boat now. I know one thing. If you um get pencil on my on my blanket, I'm gonna put you in a boat. <laughs> so y'all what I'm watching on y'all excuse the feet. I know that's distracting Um, what I'm watching on TV girl. I'm watching a lot. So girl first of all, let's get into this little series behind her at uh, almost said, behind her eyes girl get it together behind her eyes. It's on Netflix. It was seven or eight parts But we'll go all the way over that is very distracting because so whoever's watching it They can't concentrate because they see two brown chocolate Twix legs. Thank you. <laughs> that's good enough um, behind her eyes very interesting very different I wasn't sure what was going on by the sixth episode I was like girl what is, what is this and so look my anxiety was off the, the rails for a minute I'm not gonna really 
get into detail but check it out again it is called behind her eyes on netflix okay like i said i am watching a thousand pound sister i am watching my 600 pound life that one girl y'all i think her name is samantha samantha Samantha. I don't call everybody Samantha. So her name is Samantha. This woman has got to be the biggest. I think she's the biggest woman I've seen on here. Um, and she's a eater. So she appeases the feeders. Um, you know, they call them feeders or people who find who have a fetish with bigger women eating. So she eats for people on cam they have a request she eats it on cam and that's how she makes her money and so i think samantha is what was pushing 900 pounds y'all 900 pounds now i think she's like six one yeah she's tall she's six feet she's over six feet but her she looks like if she was thinner she would be pear shaped because her face is very small well her face is way smaller than her body and her upper part it's small but then her bottom like her stomach she was literally eating on her belly like sometimes i could do that too but her belly was like a little table so very very attractive beautiful woman um which is well probably why she got a lot of only what they call them only fans or whatever um but anyway i was watching 600 pound life is my point um behind her eyes like i said uh, Good Girls is back. Yes, season four of Good Girls. I'm here for it. I'm on episode, well, we're on episode three. And um, I know one thing. They better, you know, Beth and Rio, we need, I need to get a shower scene. Something needs to go pop off, okay? All right, y'all. So, Married to Medicine. It was interesting to watch the first episode. What are they on? Season 8. I'm not going to watch this season. <laughs> Bless you, baby. Don't cough like that. I'm in a <laughs> pandemic and you sneezing like that. Um, Married to Medicine, Season 8. Yeah. I'm not going to watch this season. It looks boring. But it was very interesting to see. JB, be quiet. It's very interesting to see how things are um in the middle of the pandemic how the pandemic basically affected um these people's lives because they're in the you know medical field i will say y'all that dang on uh, who is who is her what is her name tanya tasha the one married to eugene she is so annoying he's up here talking about you know people dying and they're running out of what is it ppe and she's talking about, and her main concern is oh we didn't get we didn't get to go to italy for our anniversary like really is that your her priorities have always been off but that was so insensitive for her to say that um but like i said it's very interesting to see how these people have um basically reacted to the pandemic and we're seeing you know how it affects their livelihoods and their family lives so i just watched the first um episode i'm not watching toya that's her name toya she y'all even sometimes in the previous season some some of the things she says or was worried about it seems like it's some so mundane you know that she's worried about all of these Anyway, so yeah, Married to Medicine is back. I'm not watching it. I did see a movie that I liked on Hulu called Tip Tempted by Danger. It was good. It had a black cast. I like that. Honey, just as soon as I was, I was about to cancel my Amazon Prime, I saw a preview for a show called Them. Let me tell you something. It is giving me us. And then remember that scene from, I saw this on YouTube because I stopped watching the series, um, Lovecraft Country, the Jigaboo scene with those two demons. Let me in. Let me in. Let me. So, them is apparently about a black family that moves to an all-white neighborhood in the mid-60s. But then they start acting crazy. Remember that one that once trailer we saw? And y'all at the very end of the check out the trailer. Get your Bible. At the very end, there's this character with the white lips, the black face and white lips, and he's singing and he gets really close. I said, Oh no. Let me go ahead and not cancel my Amazon. <laughs> I wanna watch that. 
I really do. Again, it's called them, and it's something about it. Give me Stepford Wise, so like I said, us Lovecraft Country. I'm here for it. So that is it, you guys. This is just a preview. Um, so I do have several videos that are scheduled on my channel, so please be expecting that. I know a couple of you have asked me if I'm reviewing certain products. No. <laughs> I have several videos, hopefully by the time that I have set to record and review, we're down to just a few. And these are the few that I had carried over from last year, honestly. And so yeah, I'm gonna start limiting or slowing down on the um, product reviews because my hair is finally thriving after I felt like I had protein overload that a uh, few times last year the end of last year and y'all this is my hair stretched but it shrunk up a bit because it's still a lot it could be a lot longer see it's past my armpit if it's stretched down so yeah my hair I guess my point is is that I don't want to start using a bunch of products on my hair and not know how it's going to turn out no I'm going to stick with my same products now I will have a review coming up or, or a hair video affordable wash day using drugstore products and some of those products are new to me but the lines are not new okay if that makes sense hey you guys so I want to share a little bit of something and this has to deal with the um series that I just got finished binge watching behind her eyes. Um, so I'm gonna share a couple of mini stories and spoiler alert, if you have not seen a series girl, you don't want to watch this part. But hopefully by now, it would have been two months since this has came out and hopefully by now most of you all have seen the series. So overall, the series is about a um, woman who ends up making out with a guy comes to find out that this is her boss she ends up having an affair with him um get some creepy vibes from his wife who turns out she's been i'm not gonna give all of it away just <laughs> i'm not gonna give it all away but turns out she's been visiting her husband and the mistress through what is it called um basically she can leave her body while dreaming so um the young woman the mistress and i hate to refer to her the the main character who is a young black woman she's also a single mom to i believe her child is seven or eight years old cute little actor in in the movie she, excuse me the series um she's been having night terrors and so the wife convinces her be able to figure out how to control her her dreams and that way she can she can ultimately control the night terror so uh choose a door go through the door before the night terror come and go to basically a happy place now how this relates to me is i'm what you call a lucid dreamer and i actually um have always to a certain degree has i have always been a lucid dreamer and i thought this was normal i thought most people were aware that when they're dreaming they're dreaming um, I would say a good 90% of my dreams, I am aware that I am dreaming. I was for a while writing down my dreams and all that and documenting it, but I haven't done that in years. So a couple of things you guys that have happened. I'm one of those who gets visitations from people who have passed on. Um, I received a very much needed visitation. I'm gonna try hard <laughs> to cry. Um, after a good friend of mine was murdered by her husband, I felt uh, lost. I felt confused. I was living in fear. Um, I was very, fairly young. Her and I were in our mid-20s. And um, I had this weight on me. Almost. So I received a visitation from every woman, matriarch, whatever you want to call it, woman. Is it matriarch or paternal? On my father's side paternal so basically his mother his grandmother and his great-grandmother visited me um I have a story time on that I'm not really ready to release that I don't think I ever will but that was very very I needed that as soon as I woke up boom I could feel the weight or whatever that was the fear leave me thank god for that um, another quick thing, my, now my light is blinking. Besides visitations and people who have died, and I, I literally feel like they are them, because again, I'm very aware that I'm dreaming. My husband and I dream shared. This was like two years into us dating, 
and it was a funny dream but we basically i don't want i don't necessarily want to call it dream sharing but we basically had the same exact dream on the same night i was being well he was being pulled over by a cop the cop was trying to arrest me i was heated in his dream he was pulled over by a cop i was arguing with the arguing with the cop and almost got arrested isn't that funny but yeah i just want to share that tidbit on me personally do you believe in all that like i said are you a lucid dreamer so that is it everyone bye